June 2025 is packed with some really cool and rare things happening up in the sky, and you seriously don't want to miss any of them. Whether you're into stargazing or you've never really looked up before, this month is the perfect time to start. There's something happening almost every week that you can enjoy with just your eyes and maybe a pair of binoculars. Let's start right at the beginning of the month, June 1st. If you're someone who wakes up early or maybe has to get up for work, you're in luck. Venus will be shining super bright in the morning sky before sunrise. This is when Venus reaches what's called its greatest elongation. That just means it looks farthest away from the sun in the sky from where we are on Earth. Since Venus is so bright, you don't even need a telescope to see it. Just look towards the eastern sky before the sun comes up, and you'll spot it shining like a really bright white star. It's actually the third brightest thing in the sky after the sun and moon. You might even hear people call it the morning star. It's not really a star, but it sure looks like one. The cool thing is, even though this event is at its peak on June 1st, Venus will keep hanging around in the morning sky all the way until November. So if you miss it once, you'll still have other chances. Next up is something really awesome on June 3rd. You're going to get to see three planets and the moon all in one night. That's right, Venus, Saturn, and Mars will all be visible, along with the moon, just by looking up. Early in the morning, before sunrise again, Venus and Saturn will be in the eastern sky. Venus will be bright and easy to spot, and Saturn will be above it to the right. Saturn won't be as bright, but you can still see it if the sky is clear. If you have a small telescope or even a good pair of binoculars, you might even spot Saturn's rings. While that's happening in the east before sunrise, Mars will be doing its thing in the west-southwest sky just after the sun goes down. Mars is more of an evening planet right now. On June 3rd, if you look up an hour or so after sunset, you'll see a slightly gibbous moon which means it's more than half full but not quite all the way. The moon will be sitting in front of the constellation Virgo. Mars will be near the bright star Regulus, which is Leo's heart. On this night, Mars is getting closer and closer to Regulus, and over the next few nights, you can actually watch Mars move as it passes by the star. It's kind of like a slow-motion race across the sky. Also around this time, Jupiter is still hanging out in the sky, but it's getting harder to see. It's moving closer to the sun from our point of view, so it'll be low in the west after sunset, right in that bright part of the sky, where the sun just went down. By the end of the month, it'll basically vanish into the sunlight and come back in the morning sky in a few weeks. So if you want to catch a glimpse of Jupiter, do it early in June. Mercury is just starting to come back too, after being hidden by the sun. It's still pretty close to the horizon and sets just a little after the sun. But it's getting better each night and will be easier to see next month when it reaches its own greatest elongation. Now let's talk about June 10th. This one is a bit tricky but also super interesting. It's called a lunar occultation. That's a fancy way of saying the moon is going to pass right in front of a star, hiding it for a while. The star is Antares, which is a big red star in the constellation Scorpius. Antares is really cool because it's one of the biggest stars you can see with your eyes, huge compared to our sun. But on June 10th, from places like Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, and parts of Indonesia, the moon will move in front of Antares and block it out like a tiny eclipse. Now most of the world won't see the full occultation, but many people will see the moon and Antares super close together in the sky, like almost touching. If you're outside those special places where the moon actually covers the star, you'll still see a close conjunction, which just means two things appearing really close together in the sky. Next on June 11th, something simple but magical happens, the full moon. This one is called the strawberry moon. No, it doesn't actually turn pink or red like a strawberry, although sometimes when it rises or sets, it might look a little orange or reddish because of the air in our atmosphere. The name Strawberry Moon comes from Native American tribes, like the Algonquian people, who used it to mark the time of year when strawberries are ready to be picked, so it's more about the season than the color. The full moon happens at 3.44 p.m. Eastern Time, but don't worry if you can't see it at that exact moment. It'll still look full and bright the night before and the night after. Just look east when the sun goes down, and you'll see it rising, big and beautiful. Finally we get to June 20th and 21st, which is the summer solstice. This is the longest day of the year for the northern hemisphere. 
It happens exactly at 2.42 UTC on June 21st, which is actually the evening of June 20th in places like the US. That's when the sun is the farthest north in the sky, and the northern hemisphere is tilted most toward the sun. That's why we get the most daylight of the whole year. If you're someone who loves sunshine, this is your time. The sun rises super early and sets really late, giving us a long bright day. But after this, the days slowly start getting shorter again, even though summer is just beginning. So make sure to mark these dates on your calendar, and tell your friends or family so you can all go outside and look up together. If you take any pictures of these events, tag us or send them in, we'd love to see them and maybe even feature them on the channel.